at the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Man, if you if you say that whatever Boosie did was right, man, you abomination unto the most high. Man, if you say anything that any if you find any wicked thing that anybody does right, you are automatically an abomination. The most high don't like you, man. An abomination is a wicked thing, man. A filthy creep, a filthy creature, a filthy anything. You are abomination unto the most high. The most high hates every wicked thing. And the fact that you try to and the, and the fact that you trying to justify it makes you more of an abomination. Go ahead, Lock. Would it be ironic if Lil Boozy's son turned out to be gay? Even wow. God! Wow. God, and that'd be messed up, man. And but guess what? You found it on the side. Look, and that's two words right there in a nutshell. Like Snoop. Snoop might have did that with his son. His son's supposed to be like... His son 40 now. Yeah. Snoop Dogg, son 40 now. You gotta think, man. And then it was like... And then I seen, I seen a post on Facebook. Said, who's who's the worst father? The picture of Dwayne Wade, 6 9 way, and wow. Boosie. Wait all the way. Yo, listen. I said Wade. Dwayne Wade. Wait all the way. It's a, Wade. And there's one reason why I said Dwayne Wade is the worst father out of all three of them. You let your 12 year old son tell you that I want to be a woman and then had a surgery to cut his to cut his penis off. At 12. It's done? It's done. At 12. Wow. You let him decide that at 12. What what preteen automatically knows what they want to do at the age of 12? Man, I didn't even know I didn't know if I wanted to still be a basketball player, a cook, uh I don't know if I still want to be the president of the United States at the age of 12, man. I don't want that now. I know what I know now, man. Forget this, forget this with you, bitch, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't nobody know what, don't nobody know what they want at 12. But you go and sit here and say, well, my son know what he wants. Well, you 12 years old. Did you know what you wanted at 12? I don't, I doubt it. <laughs> My brother said need for speed on the ground too, man. Uh -huh. so, that was a good game, huh? I, I cannot lie, man. I had it on the game too. But guess what? <laughs> oh, you want to be a woman. Man, you want to put you... That's why I say Dwayne Wade is the worst father. Is the worst father of all three. And then, I don't even understand. For me, personally, I don't know why 6 9 is up there. Why is he a bad father? Why? Because he snitched on the people who had no loyalty to him? He snitched on the people who had sex with his baby mother? Kidnapped them? Robbed them? And then tried to kill them? He owes them loyalty? Yeah. Any man that sits there and says that he should he should be killed or he's wrong for doing what he's doing, I don't trust you because you're wicked as hell. Yeah. I can't trust you because you're wicked as hell. You want to sit here and say 6 9 was wrong for snitching when men when men if you had a best friend and he slept with your he slept with your baby mama then kidnapped you with a couple other or a couple other his friends and then try and then robbed you and then tried to kill you and the cops pulled pulled them up and they caught him and you and you gonna say no nah, man I ain't see nothing no nah, they no nah, they ain't hit me on I fell I fell no nah, no nah, that, that ain't happened I fell Man, I bet you, I guarantee you won't be telling, man. You're like, that was your, that was my best friend of 16 years, man. I can't be telling everybody in the hood, but you tell them you ain't gonna tell the cop, man. You know you lying. Mm -hmm. You know you lying because you hurt. You hurt, and you, and you know, if, and you know you don't own no type of loyalty because he wasn't loyal to you. And if you feel as though, and if you feel as though I'm wrong, come holler at me. I don't care. Because like I said, man, 6 9 was not wrong for what he did. Ain't no honor among thieves, man. At all. He hired, mind you, he, was hi he hired them and paid them to be protection. But what you did was had sex with my baby mom behind my back. Then you kidnapped me. Then you robbed me. Then you tried to rob me for everything that I got. And then you tried to kill me. After I was paying you out of my own pocket.
and he was paying him out of his own pocket thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars I'm paying you for protection. But yet, I owe you some type of loyalty? Nah, I don't owe you nothing. Nope. Even if he did put out a hit on Chief Q, he was wrong for that. I agree. But guess what? You ain't owe him. You did what you did to him. You still owe you no loyalty. I ain't doing 40 years for nobody that tried to do all that stuff for me. You chillin'. I'm not taking that time. I'm not taking that bit. So yeah, I don't care. Because I owe you didn't show me any type of loyalty. Why should I show you the same loyalty? No, I refuse. What you got, huh? Uh, this is the, the, uh, the mindset of our people today in, in, in Babylon. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 1. Uh, for the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. Meaning like, you know, we're not coming back after we die. So that whole yellow spare. Uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go down to verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 6. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, and let us let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion and our lot in this. And basically, that, he said that your little spirit. You don't care not, You don't care about nothing about. You don't care about nothing about nothing about this world. Oh, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry. But yeah, you don't care about nothing about nothing unless it's this world. So you don't care about this word that's coming out the Bible. You don't care about me saying that two thirds of y'all gotta be destroyed. Cause if y'all did, if y'all did, y'all would have walked over here. Oh, oh, what you mean? What you, hold on, hold on, hold on. What you mean two thirds of us gotta gotta be destroyed? Like, hold, hold on now. How, how, like, where where you get that from? Like, can we talk about that? No, you have not. You you haven't done it. You only care about being Muslim, being Christian, drinking, smoking weed, popping pills. Doing whatever, doing whatever makes you happy, man. Playing a game all damn day. Waiting for, waiting for the plate, waiting for the United States to open back up so you can go back to work because you're tired of being in the crib, tired of being with your demon ass wife or husband because you done found out that they were cheating on you. Tired, you're tired of it, but guess what, man? Two thirds of our people still got to be cut up and die. But you still don't want to know why. Finish out what you're saying, I think. Uh, it was in the chapter 2 of verse 10. It says, Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be not nothing worth. I couldn't have said it any better than that. Yo, listen, man. If you don't know this the word of God by now, you ain't never gonna know. And how bad they oppress us, everything. The oppression, how we get set up, jails, all that, one scripture. Yo, I, man, listen, we got homework then. Wisdom of, what is that, Wisdom of Solomon chapter two? Wisdom of Solomon chapter two, man. You gotta, gotta get out of read. What's in the side of the chapter two, man? You gotta get out of the read. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good read. And now, this is the apocalypse. They came into the fire. And if you don't know, now you know. Go ahead, Oh, yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah. We're going back into our feast days and Saturday days that we're going to be keeping in the kingdom. And we're going to have even more in the kingdom. We're going to have more feast days and more Saturday days. Go ahead, Lot. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh 
come to worship before me, saying, Lord. Man, we gotta, one Sabbath to another, one peace to another, man. We gotta come worship towards the Lord, man. So, Thursday, May 21st, is the new moon for us. Other, other kinks, do it a little earlier, a little later, do it really better. But other than that, we coming to serve the Most High. We coming That's to right. Penahum, man. We coming to, we coming to feast and praise the Most High. Eat, drink, be merry. Have a lesson.